If you purchased a nice camera and are still using it in automatic mode, you're missing out on so much potential of your camera and of you as a photographer. It's time to learn how to move out of automatic mode. And I don't mean just flip it over into manual mode because that can get really confusing, probably a little overwhelming. So today I have five tricks that will help you move out of automatic mode and start getting more creative with your photography. Even if you're a little challenged in the technology department, like I was. Hi, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, I'm Diane and this is Photo Fluent. And the goal of this channel to help you get comfortable and confident using your camera so that you can start taking creative photos that truly capture your amazing travel memories. Okay, so you have a camera. It might be a nice one that you invested in, but you're not quite sure how to use it yet. You might even be taking photos and think, hey, my phone photos were better than these. Well, because you're not using it to its full capabilities. And I know that can be challenging, it can be intimidating. The technology of cameras nowadays, it's a lot to figure out. And I know I struggled with it myself. I took a lot of classes and I still didn't quite understand camera settings until I really got in there and heard it just the right way so that it made sense to me. And that's what I'm going to help you with today. I'm going to talk through five tricks to get out of automatic mode and start to understand how all those settings work. So let's get started with number one, which is move from auto to aperture priority mode. Okay, with aperture priority mode, you pick the aperture and your camera picks all the other settings. So what is aperture exactly? Aperture is the opening in your lens and the bigger the hole gets, the smaller the aperture number or f-stop. So a small number like f2.8 or f4 will give you a really big hole, which also means a lot of light can come into your camera. And on the other side, a big number like say f18, f22 will give you a really small hole in your lens. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? You have a hole in your lens. Well, the smaller the number, that means you have less of your photo in focus. So say we go back to that f4 number, f4 or even f2.8. That means a very small portion of your photo is in focus where on the other end of the spectrum, F18, F20, almost the whole thing from front to back is in focus. How do you use this in your images? This is your chance to get creative because it allows you to bring focus or emphasis to certain parts of your photo. Because our eyes as viewers tend to go what's brightest and what's clearly in focus. So if I have a person that I want to emphasize, like in this photo, the lady at the market, there's a lot going on there is food and produce and the vendor and the buildings, lots going on in this photo. But I want to bring the viewer's attention to my subject, which is this lady picking out just the right tomatoes. So how do I do that? Well, I use a shallow depth of field. So this is shot at F4. And because of that, she is sharply focused, but the background is softly focused. What does that do as a viewer? It brings your attention to her. Now, on the other hand, if we're looking at a landscape photo, like this photo in Peru, you have elements in the foreground, the middle, and the background, and you might want all of those in focus. That way, I kind of start at the foreground and go through the photo, like I'm taking a little path through it. So I use the higher aperture number here of F20 so that the entire photo would be in focus. Now this is why I love aperture priority mode because it gives me the chance to have a creative approach to my photos. I think about how much do I want in focus? Where do I want the emphasis? But at the same time, I can respond quickly in the moment without having to look at each setting and set my camera up and take a lot of time to figure it all out. So I can move quickly, I can be agile, and I can still be creative. That is why I love aperture priority mode. Now, how do you get to aperture priority mode? That's a good question. On the top dial of your camera, you will see where it might be right now, which is auto. And then there are some other options and it depends on your camera make and model, but probably it's going to say A or AP. And that is aperture priority mode. So give me a like on this video if you're a fan of aperture priority mode or if you can't wait to give it a try. 
All right, let's move into trick number two, and that is using the exposure compensation dial. Okay, so you've picked aperture and your camera picks the rest. But what if you look at your photos and think they're a little too dark or a little too bright? How do I change that? That's where the exposure compensation dial comes in. Now where it is depends on your camera. Mine is at the top and what it will look like is it will have a plus direction and a minus direction and then it has little hash marks and numbers. So when you look at this dial, when you turn it to the plus side, that makes your photos brighter. When you turn it to the negative side, that makes your photos darker. Each click that you turn will increase or decrease the brightness by a third of a stop. You don't need to exactly know what a third of a stop is or a whole stop. Just know that each click will make your photo either brighter or darker. So if you go a few clicks at a time or all the way to positive or negative one, it will make your photo quite a bit brighter or quite a bit darker. So if you just wanna give it a little try, maybe try one or two clicks. Now I'll say with the exposure compensation dial, I don't generally make my photos much brighter. Why is that? Because if they're too bright, then those bright areas have kind of been lost as far as data to go back and edit later. If you've blown out highlights, you're kind of done with that information. Now, on the other hand, if you have darker shadowed areas and you wanna edit them, you can pull the detail out of those darker areas much easier than you can pull it out of the bright highlights. So what does that mean? Well, if my photos look a little darker than I wanted them to, if you're going to edit them, that's okay, unless they're really dark. Now, on the other hand, if you have a really contrasty area, bright highlights, dark shadows. And this is pretty typical when we travel, right? It's in the middle of the day, we're out and about, you get a lot of variance in lighting. If you have both of them in the same scene, underexposing just a bit, so turning that exposure compensation dial down to the darker range by a click or two will help save those highlights and it'll be much easier to edit later. Okay, let's talk about trick number three, which is how do you know which aperture to pick? Well, if you want just a small portion of your image to be in focus, because you want the emphasis to be on a particular subject, like a person, like, like that lady at the market that I told you about, or food. If you like food photography, that shallow depth of field will come in really handy because you're trying to eliminate distractions by bringing the focus to one area. So if you have a whole table or plate of food, but the star is really one piece of that food, then a shallow depth of field will come in handy. Now on the other hand, if you have a landscape and you want everything to be crisply focused, then you want a larger number like 18 or even 20. Okay, what if you just aren't sure? Or if you have a group of people or that table of food, you don't really have one particular subject that you want to emphasize. Well, the sweet spot for aperture is F8. It's I'm not really sure or I have more than one thing I want to emphasize F8 is the aperture that you want. It's kind of between shallow and deep. You still get a lot of your photo that's in focus and it works for so many different subjects and scenes. Now, if you need a little help pulling all of these numbers together because they're not quite making sense to you or they're starting to swirl around like a hurricane, I do have a free resource for you called the Camera Settings Cheat Sheet. It summarizes aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, which we'll get to later, all in one handy PDF, and of course, I will link to it in the description. Okay, trick number four. What if your photos aren't quite as sharply focused as you'd like them to be? You might be thinking, well, I'm not using the focus function on my camera correctly. I used to think that too. I really thought it was user error, that I just wasn't figuring out how to focus right. Then I thought, oh, I know I'm using the focus function right, my camera must be broken. Actually, it was neither one of those things. What was happening is that my shutter speed was too slow. Okay, let's step back a little bit and talk about how that could happen and what that means. We talked about aperture and that's the size of the opening in your lens. The bigger it is, the more light comes in. Well, light coming into our camera is how photos are made, right? The light comes in, lands on the sensor, boom, we have a photo. But you have to have a minimum amount of light to make a photo. So when you pick the aperture 
and your camera is picking the other settings. So say for this particular picture, you think I want most of it to be in focus. So I'm going to pick F16. Well, remember F16 is a higher number. So that means a smaller hole, smaller hole, less light comes in. So your camera says, Hey, she picked F16. I need more light in. So I'm going to have to adjust one of the other settings. Okay. So one of the other settings that typically adjusts is shutter speed. So what shutter speed, of course, it's how long the shutter stays open, either fast or it can stay open for quite a while. You can imagine if it goes fast and it's not open for very long at all, not much light has the chance to like sneak into your camera, but if it's open and closed light has more chance to kind of pour into your camera. So you pick F 16, it's a smaller hole. Your camera says I need more light. So it lets that shutter stay open longer. Here's what happens. The shutters open longer. You're holding your camera, you're breathing, you're moving. The camera might shake a little bit and that is what contributes to your blurry photos. So you want to keep an eye on the shutter speed. I'm not saying you have to pick every single setting, but you say you're in aperture priority and it's starting to get a little darker. So that means less lights coming into your camera and your camera might be saying, Hey, we need to slow that shutter speed down. So you're keeping an eye on it and you start to see it get slower. Well, how slow is too slow? That depends on you, depends on how strong your arms are in holding up your camera, how heavy your camera is. You can do certain things like brace yourself against a building, brace your, your arms against your body. You can kind of, um, hold it up against I've done it on a wall or a rock that can help stabilize your camera. But generally the m number I keep in mind is about one sixtieth of a second. So I have my camera in aperture priority. I, it starts to get a little darker or I go inside and I just keep an eye on that shutter speed, either in your viewfinder as you're looking through the camera or the screen on the back of your camera. I start to see that shutter speed getting a little slow. So what do I do about that? Well, one option is to get out a tripod. If you're dead set on the aperture that you want, and your shutter speed is getting too slow. You can get out a tripod. Now I don't love traveling with a lot of equipment. So that leads me to tip number five, which is adjust your ISO. So that light starts to get low. Your shutter speed starts to get a little slower. One way to compensate for that is to increase your ISO. How you do that depends on your camera. I have a function on the back of my camera that says ISO and I can adjust it from there but take a look at your camera. And if you can't find it, then search for your camera, make and model and ISO, and you'll find lots of tutorials exactly how to do that. It's probably something you're going to want to be familiar with because you might want to change ISO on a fairly regular basis. Okay. So I said that aperture is the size of the hole in your lens. Shutter speed is how fast and slow that shutter moves. ISO is kind of the third setting that determines how much light is getting into your camera, how bright or how dark your photos are. So you don't have to be an engineer and understand all the intricacies of all of that stuff. Just know that when it starts to get dark or you go inside and the lights lower, you're going to have to increase your ISO if you don't want to use a tripod and if you don't want blurry photos. So we're sticking to aperture priority mode, right? The light starts to get low. So I look at the back of my camera or in the viewfinder as I'm taking a photo and think, Oh, that, that shutter speed is getting down to one fiftieth, even one fortieth, one thirtieth. What does that mean? It means I need to turn up my ISO. So it's just something to be aware of. There are some settings in your camera that you can adjust your ISO to auto and then put parameters around it. If you want to look into that, that is another option, but just know if it starts to get darker, ISO is going to be your new best friend. Now it comes with a caveat, higher ISO means a little noise or grain in your photos. It's something you can remove later with editing. And I honestly, I'm not too worried about a little grain. I'd rather have a little grain than lug around a tripod when I travel.
Now, if what you're learning so far is inspiring and you wanna keep learning and get more comfortable with your camera, make sure you subscribe and turn on the notifications because new content will come out every single Thursday. Okay, so at this point, you might have some numbers swirling around in your head and you might even be a little overwhelmed with all of the information. It's a lot, and I know camera settings can get confusing. So how do you make sense of all of this? Well, I want you to get out your camera and put it in aperture priority mode. And the next thing I want you to do, maybe first, let me know in the comments, do you currently use aperture priority mode? And if not, are you excited to give it a try? So now that you have your camera in aperture priority mode, I want you to put it on F4. Okay, and the range that you have available on your camera depends on your camera and your lens. If you have detachable lenses, then the lens will determine what your aperture range is. If your camera and lens are not detachable, then that system will have its own range of aperture. So pick the lowest number that you have available and go make some photos. Then pick the highest number you have available and go make some photos. And then look at the difference. Do you see that some are sharp through the whole image and some are only sharp in a very small portion of the image? Start to compare and then start to try to emphasize a certain subject in your photos by focusing on that and using a shallow depth of field or a small f-stop number. And then of course, keep an eye on the brightness and darkness and play around with that exposure compensation dial a lot and keep an eye on your shutter speed. Even if it's in the middle of the day, just get in the habit of knowing how you see what the shutter speed is as you're taking photos. So pick your aperture number, and then whether you're looking at your numbers in the viewfinder or the screen on the back, pay attention to what all those different numbers are that your camera is picking, just so you become more familiar with them. And now that you're getting more creative with your camera, you're going to want some tips on composing some fabulous photos. So go watch this video that I'm sharing on screen right now, seven composition tricks that will improve your travel photos. And I'll see you over there.